uh, our first speaker is Frankie Millington. And here are some answers to the questions that I asked. I asked, if you were a pro wrestler with an intro or hype song, what might that song be? And I was told it is the hairbrush song from Veggie Tales. <laughs> Serious question, does anybody know that song? Somebody sing it. Oh, wow. Perfect. Okay. Frankie, you're not a wrestler. All right. <laughs> Best scar story. I managed to insert a whole set of scissors into my knee while making porn Pokemon cards. <laughs> Was this recent? Long time. Long okay. Long time ago. Uh, and uh, his, uh, his fun human trick... <laughs> My trick is just being human. It's not. <laughs> My stupid human trick is that I have the uncanny knack of being able to look at someone right when they're spitting a loogie. I shit you not. <laughs> Always. Always. It's really embarrassing. Frankie's is much cooler. He has two hitchhiker's thumbs, and he is happy to show everyone. He's really also happy to show you this talk that is about to happen. Drag is for everyone. Please, rousing applause for Frankie. <laughs> The library is now open. Hello, my name is Frankie. It's nice to meet all of you this evening. Tonight, you're gonna learn that drag is for me, for you, for everyone in this world. Gay, straight, undefined. It's about community. It's about excellence. It's about looking fucking snatched like those drag queens on the cover of entertainment. Give a round of applause for those drag queens. But in all seriousness, just so you know, I'm not a hack. That's a picture of me with my drag mother the night she adopted me, and two pictures of me donning a full face of makeup, which I did not have time for this evening. Thank God for you, because you had all dropped dead from the gorgeous attire. That would happen. Anyways, drag really is about community. Drag is the core of the queer community. It, the entire community, LGBTQ plus unidentified whatever, was pioneered by drag queens throwing bricks at fucking Stonewall, who would then later on become transgendered women, who would then define the transgender generation early on, and then define pioneers like Miss RuPaul, who would then define even more pioneers through her show RuPaul's Drag Race. Pioneers such as Bob the Drag Queen, Eureka, and Shangela in a show called We're Here, where they go to grow communities in communities where drag and the queer community is not as prominent as it is in bigger cities. And I just needed to add this picture of Bob the Drag Queen because I think, above all, she is one of the biggest pioneers of the drag community. She is outspoken, loud, and represents excellence in this, but truly, Drag has grown. It has displayed different phenomena, such as Dragula, which is about the punk aspect. And Dragula gave platform to other types of drag performers, like drag kings, uh, non-binary queens, bio queens. And if you don't know what a bio queen is, it's beautiful women in the upper right-hand corner who are biologically women, but still have an excellent, glamorous performer within, within them. And they bring it out in their drag persona. All drag is valid period. Such as Kylie Sonique, the first transgender woman drag queen to win RuPaul's Drag Race. RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars, I might add. Come on, yeah, round of applause. That's huge. But the thing about drag, and Miss Jinx Monsoon once said, if you're a fan of Drag Race, you're not a fan of drag. You're a fan of a reality competition show. Because drag is just not what you see on TV or what you see on your screens. Drag is community. Drag is in your local towns, in your local bars. Drag is that person who's hustling through duct tape and pads and wigs and glitter to get their asses out on stage for you. A prime example of that, that Ginger Minge is very excited to show you, is Miss Evie Oddly, our very own Denver drag queen, who won season 11 of Drag Race. When she was shit on her entire season, but guess what? That girl hustled. She was out there every night. She loved what she did, and she loved the community that celebrated her. 
And she even started in shows like Weirdo, where at Gladys, the nosy neighbor, anyone of any drag variety could come up and strut their stuff, kings, queens, non-binary, what have you. It was valid, it was performance, it was art, and once it comes back, it will be. And it's just fucking weird. I mean, look at this. Mustache drag, short bowl cut drag, Orville Peck, everything. Anyone in the queer community who can don ridiculous, glamorous attire. And that's what RuPaul did. RuPaul did early on in her career. She was unapologetic. She refused to let anyone put her in a box. She was, and still is, the quintessential drag queen that has defined a generation. She, among many other pioneers, held flags high, held her head high, for the sake of what would one day be a grand queer community that I, myself, as a semi kind of drag queen, am grateful for. It also defines fashion. I mean, look at Billy Porter. Look at anyone attending any major award ceremonies nowadays. Men, women, undefined, they all come out and they all wear what they feel good in because fashion doesn't have a gender, okay? It just has judgment. <laughs> and fashion and drag can be as ridiculous and as campy as you want. Drag is everything, drag is art, drag is pure, drag is for everyone. And if you would like to find out more about me, and sometimes my drag, but mostly comedy and writing, here is everything about me. And uh, at the end of the day, if you want to get involved, go out, find a stage, put on a wig, put on some makeup, have fun, do drag. Thank you. And in juxtaposition of his fantastic shoes, I bring you my child's combat boots. <laughs> What's going to be comfortable yet kind of trendy? 